Hi, my name is Brenda Titus and welcome to my video series on my year of recovery from retinal detachment. Now, on my first video, I talked about some of the inspiration for why I decided to do this video series. So if you haven't seen that one yet, I definitely recommend that you start there. With that said, a year ago this week, I experienced the symptoms of a retinal detachment, only I had no idea what was happening. There were so many things that I didn't know about vision and complications of the eye that, quite frankly, it really truly never occurred to me. And so I decided to do these videos for a few reasons. Now, first, I'd like to give tips for people who are suddenly and unexpectedly dealing with these challenges of retinal detachment so that they can maybe prepare, cope during the early stages, etc. Now, second, I'd like to provide awareness about these eye issues so that others can be aware of the signs and symptoms um, and so that they can get treatment as soon as possible. And third, since there were honestly so many challenges to overcome through this healing process throughout the series, I'm going to be doing some additional ongoing videos about emotional recovery beyond those initial stages. So I have things that I'd like to talk about in terms of, especially maybe where they might also uh, be things that I help people with in my hypnosis office as well. So ultimately, probably the most important thing, I'd like to give hope to people who are going through this journey to help them get through it. So in today's video, I'm going to share some of the early warning signs that I experienced. Now, I've decided not to get too involved in explaining the symptoms um, or all of the details about what a retinal detachment is. I'm going to focus on my own personal experience. I will be sharing some educational video um, links in, in the video description. And uh, one thing I will say though, is that the sooner a patient gets evaluated and treated, the better. And in all honesty, I had symptoms for a few days before I realized that anything was happening to me. And um, I just, I didn't know. So that's why I'd like to be able to share with, with other people. So we'll talk about those first earliest symptoms. So my first symptoms that I experienced were on a Saturday night and I was just about to go to sleep. So it was dark and I noticed myself experiencing flashes of light. And uh, I kind of thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. Felt a little magical, quite frankly. Oops. <laughs> um, I also experienced what seemed like almost kind of a band of light. So across my field of vision. So it was almost kind of like this, where there was just this band and, and it changed. So it was darker up here and then lighter down here. And I actually mentioned that to my husband. I said, wow, my vision is seeming kind of weird right now. But again, I thought, oh, well, you know, I'd already had the sparky flashing of light and I was just kind of thinking that I was really seeing a light colored pillow that was on the bed much better in contrast with the darkness of the room. So I kind of explained it away. So the next day, which was Sunday, I started noticing what they call floaters. Now, some people experience floaters and it might just be almost like a, a, um, almost like you have like a, a, a little hair. I mean, you know, it's almost kind of like a, just something just kind of in, in your range of, of vision. Um, the floaters that I experienced and that I'm more familiar with, with knowing about are more like dark specks in your, in your vision. Um, and honestly, if you try to focus on them, then they actually kind of move on, on their own, they kind of move away. So it's something that you would try to focus on, but when you try, it just kind of keeps moving further away. That's kind of interesting. You try to focus on it and it moves further away. So my experience with floaters is I'll usually say it's almost like seeing bugs, bu bugs in the corners of your eyes or birds. Now, 
I don't really like seeing bugs in the corners of my eyes. Of course, if I were to see that, that would be weird. I do like to see birds, um, but it is very disturbing when you see birds and um, can't necessarily focus on them. And that will actually be kind of a, a, a sign that I still get anxious about um, these days when I kind of confirm I'm seeing birds, a, a flock of birds fly past me as opposed to um, that I have floaters. I actually joked with my doctor about that yesterday and she said, yeah, that's an interesting way of, of putting it. So kind of an interesting side note is that I had experienced floaters um, about a year and a half before I ever had my retinal detachment. It was just one day or two days. It was weird. We thought it was strange. Um, I, I didn't go to the doctor. Or I didn't do anything about it. Didn't occur to me. And thankfully, they stopped and I didn't get any intervention. I didn't know how important a symptom it was. Thankfully, they had gone away. But Unfortunately, because I'd already experienced that, it didn't occur to me then a year ago when I when they actually were a symptom of something I didn't I didn't know. So I'm going to be very clear. If you ever experience a sudden onset of floaters or flashes of light, get checked out as soon as possible. It is actually considered a medical emergency. And uh, and actually, as you hear about my experience, seriously, the sooner that you can get medical attention, the better, because um, there is, the, the faster that they can do something, you know, you might actually be able to, it, might, it could be a retinal tear as opposed to a retinal detachment. So it is something that they want to get to as, as soon as possible. <sighs> so, We've got Saturday night, Sunday, that Monday. Now, I hadn't thought about this in a long time until I was preparing my notes for this. And so that Monday, I remember thinking to myself, um, I don't really know why, but you know, it had been a few months. I was I was late for my annual visit to my eye doctor. I'd been really busy um, do, dealing with some other things and I just hadn't you know, gotten it into my calendar. And I also realized in the midst of that, that I was wearing a slightly older pair of, of prescription lenses. Um, basically, you know, I had some typical, you know, nearsightedness or yeah, nearsightedness and astigmatism. So I had my glasses. So I actually deliberately went and got that Monday my mo most current pair of glasses just to be really sure that I was wearing the most current pair of glasses. And um, and again, I didn't think too much about that, like there was something wrong with my vision per se. Um, but by Monday night, I do remember I'd been, you know, kind of working on the computer for a while. My eyes maybe were a little irritated. I had a client and it was late in the afternoon. And as she was leaving, I kind of realized that, um, sounds terrible that I still didn't realize there was something really, really serious going on. But I, I kind of felt like maybe my lower vision was was off, like that I couldn't see my feet or, you know, like the, the floor, the ground. And again, I, I kind of explained this away in some, some kind of weird, I, I don't completely know why. It wasn't like I had lost my vision. It just didn't seem as clear to me. Um, however, that night at dinner, I was talking to my husband and, and talking over some things and it was more just kind of like this, this lower end of things. It was like, I had like a, almost like a bubble, like it was hazy to me. And, uh, only as I was talking to him about this hazy bubble, um, I also noticed that I, if I, when I moved my eye and glanced over this way or that way, it would kind of move around a little bit. So I thought, okay, maybe I need to, you know, get, get checked out. 
Now, in my mind, I was thinking about things like glaucoma and cataracts. Those were the things, you know, that I was aware of or that I remembered my grandparents had had and um, or even, you know, my dog had had one one of those. I mean, technically, I still didn't know what it meant or what the symptoms were, um, but I just kind of, those were the things that I was aware of. And so I thought, okay, well, I better, you know, get, get checked out, go talk to the eye doctor. So on Tuesday, I uh, did call to make an eye doctor appointment for later that week. Now, again, what I know now... <laughs> Actually, we'll be talking a lot with the hypnosis things about if I knew then what I know now, I would have handled things differently. But it is true that if you call the eye doctor and you tell them that you are having floaters or flashes of light, um, they they would start talking to you about having a, a, a retinal detachment or tear and that that needs to get checked out and it's a very serious medical emergency. Um, so they, they do actually, at least at my eye doctor, they would screen for that. What's kind of interesting is I'd kind of, it was like all of these symptoms had kind of built up over the few days. And so I didn't really think about, well, I had this flash of light. I had the, 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 um, the haze over like this. I had this weird bubble, you know, and, and all of those things. So it all just kind of, you know, happened so fast. So, um, so I moved through my day and, uh, that day it was a Tuesday and, uh, I, you know, kind of gone from, from one thing to another, had a, had a busy day. And I finally was getting to the end of my day, had a few minutes to just slow down and relax. And, um, I had this aha moment and, I would call it an unfortunate aha moment because it led to a lot of really difficult things. However, it was the moment of realization, the moment of understanding that is really significant because, um, because in that aha moment, I realized, oh my gosh, I might actually be experiencing something really serious that I need to get, at get attention about. And so this was the aha moment. So like I said, after this busy day of errands and, and running about and, and all of that, I finally have a few minutes to sit and relax, slow down, right? And I was thinking about a extended family member who uh, about three months before this period of time, he had gone through this medical emergency and part of the medical emergency is like, just so disruptive to his life is that first he had to hold his head down, downward, right? You're down, face down for about a week. And uh, after that point in time, he was uh, going to have to not be able to go up to elevation for several weeks after. And like he had to miss Thanksgiving. He wasn't able to travel to his home back and forth to visit, you know, the family over the mountain passes and all of that. And I thought, I thought, wow, that would be, that would be terrible. That would be so disruptive to somebody's life. And I'm working so hard on, you know, sitting up straight and holding my neck upright. And I went, oh, wait, what, what was that that he had? And I remembered, and I went to my phone and I grabbed my phone and I looked up the symptoms for retinal tear and a retinal detachment. And I knew, I mean, I didn't even have to question it. I a hundred percent knew that I said, oh my gosh, I, I need to do something about this. And of course my first thought because I didn't, I knew that, you know, I had a full week of clients. It was January and in the hypnosis office, we're like, heck yeah, let's, you know, fully booked and, and help these people. And they'd been waiting for a couple months to see me and I didn't want to let them down. And I was like, oh no, if I'm going through this, I'm going to, you know, cancel, have to cancel on people and let them down. And I was kind of like, well, could I wait? Should I, should I wait and go to the doctor tomorrow? Cause it was like right at the end of the business day. And, uh, and I, I called the after hours, you know, at my doctor's office and I, I told them what was going on and they said, uh, yeah, you sh you should probably go. And they said, well, go, go to urgent care. 
And so I grabbed my husband and, you know, he, like many other people, we, none of us really like uncertainty having, you know, having our, our plans get disrupted and, and our evening disrupted or whatever. And I just looked at him and I said, I'm really sorry, but I think I need to go to the doctor. And, uh, that began a night and actually a, <laughs> a week and then many weeks of doctor's appointments and diagnoses and surgery and recovery. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a, a, a lot of time of, of life being dis disrupted and, and, and changed and, um, and, uh, but, but here we are. So I'm going to be ending soon and uh, I'm only, I'm going to tell you in the next episode about my adventures in emergency medicine. Uh, but I do really appreciate you joining me on this journey and I look forward to coming back the next time I'm able to sit down and record and tell you about the next step. So I wish you a wonderful day. And again, thank you, thank you for joining me on my year of recovering from retinal detachment.